By the late 80s, Double Dragon was just about everywhere. The popular arcade game had been ported most notably to the NES, but also the Sega Master System, Game Boy, various home computer systems, you name it. But did you know Double Dragon was released on the Atari 2600? That's right, kids. You could team up with your buddies for some two-player side-scrolling beat-em-up action on your Atari 2600. This port was developed by Activision and carries a copyright release date of 1989, which means it had to be one of the final officially released Atari 2600 games. At this point, the Atari 2600 was on fumes, so I'm not really sure why they even bothered. Heck, to put that in perspective, Super Mario Bros. 3 was just released on the NES a year earlier. But let's forget that a million other better versions of this game exist and just examine specifically what Dan Kitchen and Activision accomplished on the Atari. Given the limitations of the hardware, it's a wonder this game even functions. So you play as Billy and Jimmy, the two brothers tasked with punching and kicking your way through the evil Black Warriors gang to rescue your girlfriend Marion. Along the way, you'll fight boss characters and you can also occasionally pick up weapons to help you out. So obviously the graphics aren't much to look at, but you can at least halfway tell what the characters are supposed to be. The thugs look like, well, thugs, and your guy looks like what you would expect. It's not a total leap of logic. Also, the backgrounds are actually fairly exceptional. Each stage has multiple backgrounds that you'll fight through, and this looks like you're fighting through the mean city streets, similar to the arcade game. You could also play two-player co-op, but I don't have any friends, so you'll just have to imagine player two. Okay, now let's get into the play control, and here's where this game sputters. As admirable as the effort is, Double Dragon just doesn't translate well to a controller that only has one button. Pressing the button punches, pressing up in the button does a flying kick, if you push diagonally down on the joystick along with the button, you'll do a kick, and if you push up diagonally plus the button, you'll do an elbow punch. That sounds simple, but getting these moves to work in real time is awkward. Oftentimes you'll do a flying kick at totally the wrong time, launching yourself face first into an enemy punch, and oh by the way, the enemies are ridiculously difficult. No matter what you do, they always counter. The good news is the enemy at the bottom is at least polite enough to wait until you're done fighting the enemy at the top of the screen before he starts attacking you, so at least it's one at a time. You get three lives and even a pretty generous life bar, but heck, the first time I tried to play this, I lost two lives on the first screen. I'm not even joking, I was trying as hard as I can. You can use the game select switch to switch between one player or two player modes, and it also features a third mode that would let player one and player two face off against each other, deathmatch style. This is actually kind of useful if you want to practice the moves, or you could just pretend like you're playing Atari Street Fighter 2. I don't know. Okay, kids, so here's a tip from your dear old Uncle Aaron. I practice this so you don't have to. If you want to be able to impress all your friends at Double Dragon on Atari, and it doesn't bother you that there are probably a million other more constructive things to do with your time on this earth, you'll need to master the dreaded Double Dragon Elbow Punch of Doom. It's tricky to get the hang of, but if you can keep the enemy slightly off axis from you horizontally and time your elbow punches just right, they won't really be able to counter and you should be able to take them out pretty easily. It's not exactly the funnest way to play through a Double Dragon game, but if it works, it works. Try and stay in the middle of the screen though, because if they get you in a corner, it's tough to get out of it. You can also use the jump kick maneuver to keep some distance between you and the thugs, but otherwise that move seems utterly useless. I mentioned weapons before, and yeah, the bad guys do sometimes have weapons. They might throw knives at you, or bats, or, well, they all look the same, but sometimes they might throw one at you, so I guess that's supposed to be a knife. You can pick up the bat if you knock it out of their hands, although honestly, you're better off knocking it out of their hand and then just using the elbow punch. It seemed like they always knocked the bat out of my hands and smashed me in the face with it for complete and utter demoralization. So is Double Dragon on Atari fun? or otherwise worth playing today, well, no. I can't recommend this unless you're just a rabid Double Dragon fan and want to own every version of it or something. There's really no reason to play this version of it other than curiosity's sake just to see what the Atari VCS was capable of. With the absurd difficulty, it's not very enjoyable to play, especially for the higher price tag it usually brings in. It is noteworthy though for being one of the few Atari games that has music and also a real ending. If you can make it that far, there is a final boss and you end up rescuing the girl. I think it just says you win or something like that, but I didn't have the patience to play this one all the way to the end. What did you think? Did anyone actually own this when it was first released in 1989? Or have you bothered to play it since then? What are some other absurd Atari 2600 ports of games that probably had no business being on the Atari that you can think of? As always, thank you for watching. Please, don't text and drive, and I'll see you next time on Friday Night Arcade.